นะโมทัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนะโมทัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนะโมทัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะปุตังธรรมังสังฆังนามสัมมิกูดับตื่นนุ่นฟังดูสิว่าพรีเซนต์เฮียเดอะท็อปิกที่ฉันอยากจะแชร์กับคุณวันนี้และฉันเลือกนั้นคือความเงียบคุณจะต้องพิจารณาความเงียบคุณจะต้องพิจารณาความเงียบนี้คือความเงียบแค่ความเงียบคุณจะต้องพิจารณาความเงียบนี้คือความเงียบ Really abstract word. So I'm not going to uh, go into that right away, but just for the uh, some kind of a summary of what I'm going to tell you, and we elaborate it later. According to the Lord Buddha. The, how does he teach the emptiness? It starts with concrete, like um, the village. But I go into the village. So when we usually in the uh, One of the sutta that he introduced, usually, usually the pikku or the nuns goes to Pindabad, collect alms food in the village, in the city. Um, the dwelling in the emptiness, he re recommend the mendicant. To uh, contemplate the emptiness, which means that um, no expectation. When you walk, you have in your mind you uh, be careful, uh, mindful. Uh, no expectation, uh, and that's the thing that he recommend to uh, to them. For example, another example: when one go into the house, that house is empty because. They found in that house uh, all monks, no animals, no female, no man, nothing, just monks. So this was empty of all of those, but the present one are the monks. So that one says, you see, the empty of something that you don't see, something that not present. It's empty, yeah. void of those animals, farm, all kinds of things. Just only prison and the monks. So those are concrete, concrete example. Next step to that is you walk in the forest. Every day, most most of the day, if you're in good weather, I used to walk outside in the field. In my mind, sounds of birds, all kinds of things, as in the field. But because I say emptiness.
that keep improving. Forests that you see now turn into earth. I am dwelling in the emptiness, just only the earth, the forest is gone. The next step to it is, I'm dwelling in the uh, space. The, the abstract, the solidity is present, but the earth is not present. empty of earth. Next level, I am dwelling in the uh, infinite space. I already done infinite space. Now, infinite, infinite consciousness. So when I dwell in that infinite consciousness, the space is present. Do you understand? It's a little bit, it's a little bit abstract. It's abstract. But in short, I make it short, and uh, we are talking about the mind and the body. Go back to the concrete one to develop the wisdom. But in order to do that, we have to, to meditate and how to contemplate. So the meditation, I don't want to uh, define it, is the sitting down and uh, they have four posture. sit long, so I lay down. So um, meditation is you sit down and you concentrate. And they have a form to add to that uh, meditation. And that formula was um, in Pali word, Sevika, you direct the thought. And after you direct the thought, you sustain that thought. Don't let that thought go. You sustain it. And then the next step is a rupture. You can No. Yeah. When people ask the Lord Buddha, what do you do each day? What kind of contemplation do you do each day? The answer was, I contemplate in the concentration of the breath. 
you see. So in this case, the breath is the the right thought. And keep maintaining that breath. the mind that the mind cannot see things and what are they? they are sensual pleasure ill will sloth and torpor um, restless or remorse and remorse and the last one is doubt. Those five here you follow you all the time until the level of your concentration getting higher and higher, then you will be able to uproot all of them. But first, with our much knowledge of, you know, uh, as a, a, a meditator, uh, beginner, uh, have to be a very some kind like um, patient endurance will help you to go through. So during the um, the meditation, in order to deal with those five hindrances, you take you gave the thought. You gave the thought. First, maybe you start to have 
deal with, work with sensual pleasure. Because this is the one, the very important one. How did the, 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 the sensual pleasure start? What is the definition of that sensual pleasure? What are the cause? What are the effects from that? You know, you, you, you work one at a time. You sit down, sit down and you see those. When you see it happen, there's a, I deal with, I usually deal with one uh, object at a time. Maybe sometime for one week or sometime two weeks to see whether, we, because a sensual pleasure uh, deal with a lot of things. It deal with when sensual pleasure come in it deal with the six sense basis. What are they? They are sense based eyes, ears, nose, tongues. Eyes, ears, nose, tongues, the body and the mind. You know, there are six of them. Six sense bases, internal, it's within us, you know very clear, and external within the others. They're called the first six sense bases. The sense bases need the object outside of the body. And what are they? The eyes they form, the ears sound, the nose the smell, the tongue taste, the, uh, the tactile sensual, sensual is the body and the last one is the mind object. See, very clear. The mind needs the mind object, the eyes need the form. In order for those two sets of six activate, meet, we have contact. Contact. This is sense consciousness. The first one is sense base, and now sense consciousness. Each sense base have each sense consciousness, and they don't they don't overlap. Each one have their own function. The eyes only see the form through eyes consciousness and the other the same okay so contact so we have six contact but only the mind with the mind object the mind the consciousness the consciousness of the mind the mind consciousness you see I have three them have a whole function, including the five from five sense organ and with the, the, the mind and more that not in the mind there, so include everything. So that one you have another set, there are three sets already, three sets of six. So sense base, internal, sense base external and consciousness you know internal a contact six sense con six different kind of contact and then uh, those things you have to know all of those 
in other when you sit down and meditate so take it take time to realize that's what say i i'm going for meditation you know uh, uh that that's when you sit down sit down walking sitting down and then you uh meditate on those you know to, to get the result while doing those the hindrance have no chance to emerge this is another way you know you another way to deal with the five hindrances and when you get to the higher level of meditation then the 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 strength of the six uh, of the strength the strength of the five hindrances uh, start to disappear until you get to the level of arahat and then completely disappear okay so that that go to the uh, uh, meditation regarding to contemplating we contemplate usually we contemplate the the cause and effect and the arising and the disappearing disappear the passing away of that thing so how do you what what are the thing that you you practice for contemplation in this case the lord would have show us on the cause the law of the cause and effect dependent origination so we have to learn to understand what are the origin what are the causes and what are the effect so he classified it into two groups the cause the cause there are five of them ignorance craving clinging uh formation karma formation and karma existence those are the causes the effect the group of effect come with uh, the form materiality mentality the six sense base that we just mentioned mentioned uh and the uh, uh, the contact and the feeling do you remember now this this is a very this is we, we, we want to to be enlightened we have to be very have to be very attentive and we use always use the sentence yoniso mahasikara manasikara which mean that uh, seriously attention not only the attention but but serious attention always use that in order to understand all of those so now we arrive to the what i said what we just said here that contemplation the object of that contemplation is dependent origination in a, in the dependent origination we find out there is cause and effect but at the end 
of knowing the cause and effect somehow that's the system is working by itself there's no self no self because the cause rising and passing away rising and passing away where are you in there none this is a job of of the the mind and the body to work it's no no i no everything not belong to i no myself, no mine. See that how clever it is? Just see that, just see the, the, the dependent origination, just a law of the karma. So if you, and then through that understanding, we also know how to distinguish between the wholesome action and the unwholesome action because the un the unwholesome faction belong to the defilements and the defilements are the hindrance that obstruct the mind uh, that the mind cannot see clearly cannot be smart we, we can obstruct the, the blind the mind you also know the wholesome how to distinguish the, the, the wholesome from the unwholesome where are those things come from come from our the body and the mind here through speech action and thought so when we know the thought is not good is unwholesome stop it when it is wholesome then take it and develop it and rest and 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 maintain it you we have to know how to raise that wholesome action so that become the the forerunner of our path of our actions so careful on speech where do we get all of those from the precepts you see everything has related very related, but I put it in now. I just take it piece by piece, and when you get out of those, not to kill, not to steal, because when you kill, steal, those are unwholesome, but not to kill are wholesome. Not to steal, not to lie, commit adultery and alcohol. Not to take all of those, and then the result from that, this is a, those are basic thing that each one of us use our during our daily life. So with mindfulness is very important and pay attention closely that will help us to uh, lighten our unpleasant feeling. And then if we go back to the dependent origination. It starts from ignorance. And ignorance is a cause. Okay. The second one, because of ignorance, we have formation mental formation, sankhara. That formation need consciousness. When sankhara arise, the, it, it lead to uh, consciousness. Then when consciousness without the form, 
cannot do anything. The consciousness need to have, lead to, need to have the body. So it's formed now the body and the mind. And then the six sense bases, you see? And then with six sense bases, we can also call door, open to the outside and also open inside. The six doors through contact. When contact happen, it follow the feeling. So what are they? Feeling. Feeling sad, painful, or pleasant, or neutral. When the thought come in, when the contact come in, the feeling arise. So you choose, you have the chance to choose whether continue or not continue, you break there, break the, the, the contact, or break the feeling. If you happen, don't uh, see clearly, it go into contact, and the feeling don't act up. If the wholesome one go, you know, and, but, but also be careful after the feeling you have, you have a craving. Yeah. Craving derived from desire. We live in the world of desire. So we have to be very careful when desires happen. And the way to minimize, we have to minimize the desire. How do we minimize the desire? When the desire start, desire to do something, do it right away. Otherwise, you waste your time of thinking what needs to be done. So you let time go. You know, take time, hours, days, waiting. So when waiting, all kinds of things happen, the anxiety happen. So when the anxiety happen, it hurt the feeling. It takes time. So in this case, the time come a very important factors in our practice. Don't waste your use, don't waste your time, don't waste my time. So when the desire start, the sooner we do it, the less the time you use. The expression sometimes they call in the suttas, you eat time. Yeah? And then when you don't do it right away, you keep dragging, dragging, and keep thinking anxiety build up, then you are slave of time. Yeah? This is a notion of time. Time is the, what you call it, the um, distance or the space between the beginning of the desire and the end of the desire. So it's called time. Today we learn a lot. Also, this is a four, the, 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 because the, the dependent origination help us to realize that there is no cell. Why is that? Because everything done by the system, by, by conditions. Today, I like to raise the, our topic into the place where no condition, unconditioned. Thing came from condition. In mathematic form, uh, words we call derivative. Everything's derivative is derived from something. Yeah, derivative. The uh, we go beyond that. 
pretty soon later on will be will will come from that area. So now everything you see it, you put it right away. It's no man. It's just no man do it. No woman do it. No no self. Everything done automatically by the system. And we have to learn how to understand this, this system, not in the way that the physician do it, in the way that knowing that we know how to control our emotion, our desire, everything. But you have to know it in order to use this, this, this body here is very smart. Uh, very smart build up, but the user have to know how to use it. If we do not know how to use it, then it will be a waste of life. We continue to come to come back again and again and again, never can get out of that kind of loop, you know, birth and life and death. And go from one birth, go to next birth, second birth, just keep going on. We are staying here, we are, we are human here. I do not know how many, how many thousand, thousand years that I have been, went through, go through that kind. So the Buddha teaching show us how to get out of that loop. The loop of coming back, we call reincarnation. And this is because of the cause and effect. You know, the, the, the causes, I repeat again, come from ignorance, craving, clinging, and then formation, and then uh, existence. That's five. After the formation come existence, come existence. Yeah. And the effect is a birth, is a consciousness, is a, uh, uh, what is it? The um, sixth sense base, the contact, the feeling, and what is the other one? I go the other <laughs> Yeah, five. Is one if if the, the the body is gone, this body, the, the, this effect's gone. It create a new one, cause. Repeat it back and forth as it could go on. If we don't know, it just keep on and on and on, you know, life, death, and then and then birth, death, birth, death, nonstop. So the Lord Buddha gave us a way to get out of it. The one other topic that I like to get it in is this body, the contemplation. The first one I, we, I just we just, just talked that dependent origination, and now is the the body. How do we take care of this body? But knowing how to contemplate the emptiness of all kinds of things that we do not need, then we can live our life carefully with much attention and properly and if we have a lot of patience someday we're going to liberate ourselves where we can free the mind from all those defilements and we can call that Deathless. 
So the teaching of the Lord Buddha lead us to death threat. The gate, they, the, 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 this is mentioned, the gate of deathless is open. That's a message. But where is it? In order to find where is it, we have to associate with the wise. Read the scripture, then it make you understand, give you some inspiration to work, to get into that deathless, deathless realm. Don't lose patience. We need patience. Life after life, you just keep continue. In simple words, is just keep doing good. Go back to the body. Everything is have 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 a uh, embedded the emptiness in that. So the body. We all know that the body form of four elements. The elements to the people who do not know what is element mean means. Then they say earth, four elements, water, air, and heat. Each element, you can investigate on that. Like earth, that, 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 that at the beginning of this talk, we talk about forest, and then earth, and then solidity. You saw? So each one, each element have their characters. Like earth, solidity, Water, fluidity, uh, heat, uh, air is uh, what you call movement, and the heat is 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 hot and cold. You know, heat, yeah. You you you, you, you contemplate that you dissect it. All of those, it's the 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 character, the property of it is it's 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 a um, abstract word. So, so you need to understand uh, clearly uh, in order to move on. Now. Just to understand, it's not enough. All of those, we have to, uh, all of everything I said, through books we learn, through listening to the Dhamma talk, listening to the good related Dhamma, all of those, it's not enough. We have to get insight. Meditate, vipassana, insight, meditation. That's the real thing that through that we can liberate ourselves. The, the mind is very hard to train. So first we have to calm the mind, calm down the mind. They have a simile in the, in the suttas, that's about the uh, hunter who got six kinds of animals representing the six uh, door that we have, six sense base, 
he tied those animals, I remember some of them, like a snake, crocodile, monkey, uh, dogs, jackal, and I don't remember the other one. Okay, six of them. The, the hunter tried to tie them. All the six tied by the neck and a knot. Tie all of them. And he let go. So each one of them, who are the strongest one, is the, is the one who lead it. So non-stop, no direction. So it's not a solution. If you, if you tie down the, the sense door, uh, that way, uh, it's not working. So the other way that working, you have to have the post. Tie all of those animals by the neck and tie it to the post. So whoever strong, more and more strong than the others, they can take it, but just around until you get tired. And then there's a time to train the mind. And the mind gets tired. And you can train the mind. So make the mind train. But the Lord Buddha said, there are four places used as a domain for the mind. What are they? The body? Daffy, you have, I just said, earth elements, four elements. The body? The feeling? It's a bit abstract already, feeling. The mind can go into that feeling. Because we know the mind goes to that feeling. We can stop that kind of feeling. And the third one is the mind. See? Chitta. And the fourth one is the Dhamma. Dhamma is everything. Is some 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 other people call phenomena. It's all the experience we have done. Is it is it all three of them? The the experience done through the body, the feeling, and the chitta and the mind. All of those you get experience, and it's called phenomena. It's the Dhamma. So the mind can dwell in those domain. Other than that, it's not the mind's domain. So as a trainer, the, the trainer is the one who used this body and the mind, have to know all of those things in order to train the mind properly so you can use it properly. Yeah? So it's a little bit we something that's so good we have to some kind of uh, patience, have a lot of patience in order to get that result. I don't mind. Years after years of mind, but keep doing that. Strive for liberation. I hope we all have that kind of mentality. Uh, striving that, never give up, never give up. You give up, you go into the ditch. So just keep straight. When you fall down, get up and do it again. You know, again and again and again. Finally, we reach to our destination, that is to free the mind from uh, greed, hatred, and delusion. You see, but the most important in here go back to simple things is how do we um, understand or get the insight of non-self. All the example that I mentioned in here, all the formula that the Lord Buddha put it out for us, all of those 
Underneath it, embedded in that is non-self. The body is not mine. I am not that body, and this is not myself. Yeah. Those, the, those, those that we use every in the daily life, practicing in daily life, by knowing, knowing, uh, understanding the the three characteristic of that phenomena of that experiences of that dhamma. So I can tie it all together. Dhamma equal to phenomena equal to uh, experiences but the Dhamma. So what are they, 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 they knowing that Dhamma, you knowing that they come, it's impermanent. It's impermanent. It changes all the time. Why we need to have something that changes all the time? And always dukkha, always unsatisfactory. Doesn't matter how much you take care, it's still not happy. And non-self. It does not listen to anything. It is just by itself. So knowing those three, that's from inside. If you know inside, when we sit down and meditate, we keep an object of meditation, and you see those three characteristics always appear and, and leave what you call arising and passing away, arising, passing away, arising, perishing, arising, perishing, all the time. So you do not need to investigate more at the end. Just only sit down and then look in, in the thought. What's going on? It's just only the arising and the passing away. That's all you need to know. That's the reason why people can sit for a long time, because you are in that space. And there's a space that, 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 that uh, uh, free from all kinds of defilements. It's a, you see that when, when, when the sensual pleasure happens, oh, it's come and it go. You just notice it. Yeah? So, in summary, what I had said from the beginning until now, I have the body in the mind, mentality, and materiality. This is sit down in front of you here. You have dependent origination. I mean, cause and effect. We have the three characteristic of the Dhamma. We have the, um, what else do we have? The, the, the contemplation. You know what's the difference between contemplation and meditation? Mm. This is good enough. But this is the way that lead us, all knowing all of those, lead us to free or to free the mind from the defilements. Another topic that I like to include in here is the first sermon that the Lord Buddha have 
given to us. It's a four noble truth. Four noble truth. Always go back to that. This is a formula. It's a talk about the present. Your experience at the present moment is suffering. Anything, anything is suffering. Yeah, that's the first noble truth. The first is the dukkha. And the next to it is the origin of it, which is a cause and effect that we had in. See that? And now what you know, when you know all of those, go to the third one, is cessation. Cessation of what? Cessation of the dukkha. Just know all the trees is not enough. You have to do your homework. The path. That's the way leading. Follow that path. I always love to follow that path because it leads you to the cessation of suffering. When we are free sufferings, then they, 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 we, we, before we do that, we have to work hard. But it can be done. It can be done. And nothing cannot be done. Can be done. That's the reason why the Lord would have put it out for us and have us apply to it. The matter of doing that and apply in your daily life all those tools that you need. In, in, in so many things, so many books are written now on how to uh, for own it's so like one four noble truth can be written in one book. You know, in the whole wide world, only Buddhism have more scripture than any other religion. I. And don't believe, don't believe on anything outside of what we, what we study in the Tripitaka. This is a real thing. It's a matter of practice it. Then you will see the result. Because the Buddha teach us, don't, don't believe me until, unless you have, until you have put it into application as work and not work. No need to criticize because you cannot use, we cannot use our worldly knowledge to train the mind. This is something entirely different. You put, let that go, put it in the shell, shell, your knowledge on the on the on the life outside of the uh, uh, dhamma, outside of the monastery, yeah. I encourage you have a lot of uh, courage if you really, really honest with yourself that I am going to walk and that path so I can liberate myself from this kind of suffering. Then I wish you all realize that destination that you wish. Never mind, never mind. If you can have today, may next year, next life, next life, we we'll just keep continue doing good things. Yeah? Don't give up. This life cannot have a place for giving up. Just continue to do it. The opportunity to have this time is COVID. That put us back to the nature, close to the nature now. So it's about time to use that precious time to develop your mind. Wisdom to use the mind. Uh, properly. So this is my 
one hour talk. I wish it be a lot of substance uh, for you to use it. Yes? So shall we have like a five minute break? Yes? Okay. Thank you. I have only I have only one I have I have one question
I think I still have one more to add it in <laughs> because we don't have I have only one question uh, to emphasize again and to the emptiness the the five candas uh, they have a simile on that to see that each one of the five khandas, five aggregation, uh, have no substance. Yes, empty. Yeah. So the the body, the body, is is a lump of it look it like a lump of foam that float on the, on the river, and by the end, it's just foam. Just you know. Uh, disappear into small, small, small pieces, nothing in there. That's the body. And the feeling is look like a drop of rain water fall into the river, surface of water, a bubble, and disappear. There's nothing in there. It's a feeling. Is how the feelings look like. It's appear and disappear, appear and disappear right away. And the third one is the perception. The perception is look like a, a mirage. I say when you arrive to when we walk into the desert, you see that from the far there is oh. Water, but the minute you arrive into that, there's a no water, it's a mirage. That's, that's the, uh, the perception. And the mental formation is also appear and disappear. It's like a plantain, like a banana tree. You thought that I have something hardwood inside, and when you take one one layer after the others until the inside, there's nothing in there, no substance. And the last one is the consciousness. It's it's look like a magician makes some tricks, deceptive things. And this is also non, no substance. So those, these are six kind of similes in the, uh, uh, in the suttas. They put it out. Even. And that those for those of you here, those information that I got here from the uh, Machima Nikaya, the title of that is Chula Sunyata Suttas. A short discourse on sunyata, and the other one is maha sunyata suttas that close to each other. And then uh, Piku Bodhi explained it very clear on how to use those uh, two uh, suttas that dealing with the emptiness. Yes. I have one question that. Our sister brought it to me this morning. She has one person name. Uh, her name is Jonathan, and has so many questions. Uh, I try to find one that fit to. Uh, let me see. To me, what inspires you to become a nun? Would you say your example could be a role model for women and men who have left to deal with sexist attitude and the patriarchy, patriarchy and go against the stream? And what are your thoughts 
on the Me Too movement. You know that if you deal with contemplation, there's nothing in here. Contemplation and emptiness, all of those are not. You see that if you don't empty your mind, and you're all kinds of things that bother you a lot, you know, how do I, do I answer that? Um, the teaching of the Lord Buddha is very inspiring. I encounter when I was 48 years old, encounter Buddhism, yet I was born in a country where Buddhism was 98, 99%. Yeah. The whole country, almost the whole country. And I was not in tune. Just only the example set by the community, by the family, uh, the five precepts is automatically doing. Everybody do it, you know. The, 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 the devotion, uh, how can I devote myself to Buddhism because I don't understand. It's just education come first. So education in order to, 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 uh, to follow the hurt. Everybody educated, have a high degree and popular, famous in, this, in the society. That's all you look for. You know, that's entirely, entirely different. Even with the separation of my husband when I was only 35 years old. And that kind of suffering is very, very bad. Can drive me to madness. Yes. But I have three children to take care. I cannot go into that state of mind. I have to stand up. I have to stand up for the benefit of my children to express my loyalty to my husband. He's gone. Gone without knowing. I don't even know that he's still alive or dead. Don't know until now. On that, that case, hope you don't mind. His, his was born on this month. So may my, my merits getting from giving Dharma talk go to him so to benefit him so he can free his life. I don't know whether he's still alive or dead. Yeah. But because of that loyalty and that um, suffering, both are equal. The level of, of, of loss and the level of loyalty both are equal. So I did my best. I went back to school in order to get a higher degree and have a higher money, higher salary uh, to raise the children. But once the children grown up, each one of them have their own place, good in the society, I have peace of mind. So what should I do? Remarry? Is no way. When I work to raise the children, plenty. But it's not my way. I got so much suffering. Nobody can take the place where I used to have. Yeah. So it put me here. I have to have that that big, 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 deep, deep suffering. I worked so hard to um, to use up all the time. If I have free time, then the mind go into that suffering, which I do not want it. Work so hard, yeah. Until the day I come here, that kind of attitude, working hard, still remain in 
in me, which means that I work hard when I come here. The first appearance to me is a nun. I told the senior nun here that I want that color of robes the rest of my life. Yeah. And I work hard, you know, no matter how, especially to squeeze to squeeze the ego, the mind. You know, when you get used to the high society where you come down here for nothing or you came with empty hand. I get out from the uh, from my country in in two hours evacuation. There's no no time to bring anything along with me. You know, come with up to hand. Yeah. To make the story short, that knowing the Dharma, it make me humble. Humble. And have a lot of uh, a lot of what a lot of um, patience, you know, because I went through the last like the ten years, always live with expectation. I work so hard. How come enlightenment not there? I can get, I, I I cannot realize that. What's the, what's else? So pounder pounder years after years, and my first. Encounter with meditate with the med- my meditation teacher. I start with dependent origination. Right away, I'm so fond of it, yeah. And work, and then I let go, and then switch from one topic to another. Until now, still, but I enjoy I enjoy this kind of life very much, yeah. Still, still like you dig. Uh, the treasure still finding every day, even the same topic, the same suttas. I do not know how many, how many times that I went through that, but still so good, you know. So nowadays I say, that, okay, we are our own refuge. So you have to give the best to this person here, to this this body and mind here. So before you let go, before you die. So give the best, give the good chance. Liberate or not liberate, just go for it. Yeah. And try the goal is try to get out of the loop of samsara, not come back again. That's the wish. If I keep wishing like that, it's it's it's, it's ignorant. You see? If I say that I I become a nun, I, I wish I become a nun. That's ignorance step in right away. Do you understand why? Because not truth is not I. No I. And and I like to be uh you know the uh popular nun. And that craving creep in. And then clinging keep in. So those are the wrong things, expectation. There is, is no I. You try to work no I. So when you do something, don't expect anything. Just keep doing. Just you know that between the you know what is good, what is not good. If it's not good, don't take it. It's good, just keep doing that. Because the good thing is a foreigner to determine what is what what is your next life. I don't even expect that. Just keep doing good. Just understanding that doing good, uh, you that you die in a good way. That's all. Yeah. Where are you going? No need to know. It, 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 no need to expect. But the final thing is uh, liberation. Yeah. We do not. We have any question here. Jan, yes. Can 
hear me? Yeah. I um, can hear, yeah. Thank you for the talk, Ajahn. You're um, welcome. You mentioned uh, time being something that uh, arises with uh, the arising of craving and ends with the ending of craving. Is that, is that, something, some, is that right? The, the, I, I don't get your question. I think you men mentioned in your talk yeah. about time. About time. Yeah, and my understanding is you said it, it, it arises when a craving arises. Yeah, the so, time. Yes. The, 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 the definition of the time is the space, the interval between the beginning of the desire and the end of the desire. So the space like this is called time. It's not what time is it, time is it, it's his clock here, it's not, not that. The time that we talk about, the definition of time is time start when the desire start. Time stop when the desire stop. So the, the, the space between the starting and the end of the desire is time. So you want, you want a desire, when the desire come in, you execute right away that desire, that's it, no more. Time's gone. No time. So you can use for something else. We live in the world of desire. So you do not want, we do not want to have too many desires. So minimize it first. So you can use time wisely rather than time waiting and keep desire full, full, full until some time just to uh, please your mind, just get it, but you never use it, you know? Yeah. So right now with COVID, you see that desire decrease, doesn't matter how much you want it, but you cannot, so stop. We, we do not want to be forced like that. We, we have to, to know how to handle it, not be forced. Our time, like right now, Right now, I use so much, I enjoy so much of unscheduled time. So deal more with the body, take care of the body. <laughs> when the, the body in tune, you go for it. In tune with what you need. Now, I'm going, with, with, if the weather is raining, so I used to have, you know, go to the, the field, walk in the field, I, I change to the, according to the weather. If the weather is not suitable, then I do something else. Unscheduled. Like when I work before, I have to be with the group. So 8, 7, 15, you have to go to the, ta to, to the sala in order to get your food. But now, no. No, I have some help. Because, because, because of that help, I can extend my meditation. I can extend other things, which is dealing related to the Dhamma, which I like to improve or to develop that kind of, of mind. Right now, forget, forget, the, forget the habit. If the habit is good, but don't, 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 don't. I change a habit all the time according to the situation. You see, the habit, if the habit all the time, then your mind go to the habit. And very quick. So many of the time I can handle so many things within a short period. Because the mind so, 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 uh, what you call efficient. Yeah, no need to think much. You just one thing, execute, one thing, execute. Yeah and decrease the one thing, because this is decreased by the strength. You don't have much strength. You cannot walk too fast. You see, you cannot carry things heavy. So you have to split the time a little bit. I'd rather keep walking for one, one goal. I can make ten goal because of the weakness of the body but still get rich to the point 
That's unscheduled. So people cannot walk. I cannot work with others because of slowness, because of the body worn out. And then when you contemplate the body, it's just almost every day. Every day, you wake up where the ache things. Yeah? So aging is part of the, some kind like uh, the sense of urgency to practice. No interest in other things, just interest in the practicing. And all the practice we know right now reinforce that, repeated it, then they're very fruitful. Yeah. I don't know, but I enjoy so much nowadays. Yeah. I don't compare, I don't, I don't have the jealousy to see other people can do so many things when I cannot do it. I, I, I don't have that jealousy. Yeah. I, I honor them. I don't miss anything, too. Because I have done before, yeah, yeah, and respect what they do, what respect what they give. So stay away from, from the we call the, the intelligent, artificial intelligent. Did you hear that kind of word, Jan? Artificial intelligent. People were structured according to the artificial intelligence because this is the you, you lose the beautiful of the mind yeah the artificial intelligence I used to be a programmer I wrote the program for the computer to work from A to Z but our mind our mind deal with many more conditions Many more. But the people with AI, with intelligence, artificial intelligence, they call artificial intelligence, cannot move when something different, if something different cannot move, cannot ex execute. But if it, if, if go like the flow, then they got a perfect result. People with that mind. People nowadays, the younger generation, have that kind of the way they train, that kind of artificial intelligence, I call. If nothing outside of, of the, the program written cannot execute. Yeah. We lost, we lost the, the beauty, the intelligence that we, we have. You know? Yeah. Does it answer your question, Pande? Well, I, I answered the question yet. Mm. The question was... Your, um, your time... The, the, yeah, your, your de that definition of time, um, mm -hmm. is that something you read in the suttas? Something? That you read in the suttas, or is it from your own experience? I, I still... I still don't get that. Um, well, you, ex you explained uh, yeah. time being the interval from craving arising mm. until craving finishing, mm -hmm. and then there's no time. Mm -hmm. And I wondered where, where that's come from, whether you've read it at all? Or? I read somewhere, but I don't remember. I read that, that article somewhere. Yeah. I can find out for you. When I gave, I gave the retreat, on 10 day retreat, the experience on uh, one day and night. I can remember that, that sutta, John? Yeah, that kind of, uh, yes. In that, they have time. Thank, I thank can, you. one day, go and do that. It's in, in the Machamanikaya. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. In, in, the, in the chanting book, we have that chanting book. Yeah. They're very, very interesting. That's what I choose a topic for the 10 day retreat, not only five days, 10 days. Yeah. But they, we have, we have each one of us experience on the Nibbana, but temporary. It's completely, completely no more, no more. Sanya, no more sanya, no more perception, no more oh, consciousness, nothing. 
You see, I experienced that. The first time I experienced that, my teacher told me that as we pass a new, that this is wrong. Don't get into that place. It will harm you. So many people get harmed, that are disoriented after the meditation, you know, that they practice. So then you have to have a good teacher. And then I report to him, I say, oh, so good. Yeah. Then the second one, I saw that. It's the same thing as a corpse. No, nothing. Right? But the corpse cannot come back. No consciousness. But the one we experience, the, the consciousness come back. It's nothing, nothing, nothing. And I try one the last 20 years when I was here. I try to set up the same thing. Same environment in order to find out that again, when to meet that again, you cannot get it. You can hear only one time. But of that done one time, we keep continue doing that. Someday we will get to that point with accumulate of little nibbana until more and more, until you realize to get to the enlightenment. So it can be done. I convince myself it can be done. Yeah. Yeah. I still, but it's just only the joy that means that you, I feel myself that I am on the right track. Keep doing that. Don't, don't, uh, uh, what you call that, uh, get out. Don't lose that kind of trust. Yeah. Have confidence in the practice. And when you, wonder, you know only that much, you read that much, give you some kind like, don't only that much. At the, at the beginning, when we come here, like as an agricast, eight precepts, just eight precepts, good enough. No need to think anything else. No need. Just eight precepts. No need to ask, just do it. Do do it. That's you. I like this morning, I saw some, some, some time I talked to our nuns. We are, we obliged the first time coming to the monastery to follow the rule, the precepts. That means that you are in a straight jacket, cannot move. I just, just only do that kind of thing, that's good enough. When we do that kind of thing, little by little, you realize something that free you from the straight jacket because because Dhamma free you then you will be come some kind like uh, not recognized by people you act weird because you don't know because you don't know even you e e even you you have your own parami your own goodness that make you enlightened, make you some kind of knower of the Dhamma, but lack of sila is, 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 is not okay. Yeah. So we are trained with sila, and when we are free, we are free, we, we already equip with sila, with good action, with wholesome deed. Yeah. And then we can help others. Yeah. The the I, I wrote out the quote that the um, I forget to say the last time. Those whose pasture is liberation, empty and free from any mark, this path is hard to trade, hard to track, like that of the birds in the sky. Beautiful, no? It's beautiful. Yeah. So right now we have, if we have no more questions, then we can close.